Thank you so much for being here. My name is Brett Fanshaw and I'm the Arizona Program Director with Solar United Neighbors. Uh, I'm based in Phoenix actually, but I oversee our work all across the state of Arizona. And we're gonna do a few things tonight. We're going to just introduce um, ourselves and our organization. We're going to do um, you know, Solar 101 uh, about solar technology, how our solar co-op prog program works, and the uh, economics of solar. Uh, how much does it cost generally? How does it help you save on your electricity bill? And what are some of the incentives that are currently available and what, uh, what may change? Um, so let's just move on to some housekeeping. So hopefully everyone can hear me uh, as I'm speaking, but if you can't make sure to uh, select the computer audio. Um, we've got everyone that's joining tonight. Uh, we're in webinar mode, so folks are just sort of in listen-only mode, but you can use the chat to submit any questions or to um, chat with others that are participating this evening. Um, and we will take some time at the end to, uh, we'll, we'll try to answer questions throughout the presentation actually uh, through the chat, but we'll also take some time at the end if there's any unanswered questions to answer them verbally. And then we are recording the webinar. We're going to put it on the uh, co-op webpage. Uh, so folks that weren't able to join us tonight uh, can view it in the future and get the same uh, information that you all received um, live. So uh, just to do some quick intros for so you know who's on from our team uh, this evening. So I already introduced uh, myself as the Arizona Program Director. And then we also have Corey Ramsden on, who's our VP of Go Solar programs. Um, Corey uh, is, has been in this uh, industry for a long time. He's a, he's a really great well of, of knowledge. And so feel free to shoot him your best questions in the chat tonight, and uh, we'll see uh, what he can and what he can't handle. Uh, so just a little bit about Solar United Neighbors. Uh, if you haven't heard of us, we're a non national nonprofit organization. Uh, we focus on helping people go solar, join together, and fight for their energy rights. We're trying to uh, help people to install solar through our co-op programs and other work. We're trying to bring people together around solar and clean energy technology. And we're also doing policy work to fight for energy rights, whether that's at the local state or the federal level. And I'll talk in a minute about some of the um, initiatives that we're currently uh, focused on. We got started in 2007, really uh, pretty organically in a neighborhood in Washington, DC. Uh, back in this time, um, the kid in the green shirt there, his name's Walter, and he had seen a film that many of us have probably seen, uh, An Inconvenient Truth, and came home to his mom and said, hey, mom, like we have to go solar like tomorrow uh, to so help to solve the climate problem. And so she started to look into it and uh, found that, you know, it's pretty confusing. She was having trouble getting a provider to come to her neighborhood in, in DC. And, you know, this, the rooftop solar industry was still pretty nascent at the time. Um, but she thought, hey, like, what if I got a bunch of, you know, people in my neighborhood that were all interested in solar? And then we could definitely uh, convince one of the companies to come work with us. And then also uh, we would probably learn something from doing this together sort of uncomplicate the process and uh, maybe we could get a good deal in, along the way by um, having group purchasing power. So that was the first solar co-op in uh, Mount Pleasant in DC. Um, and it took a while to kind of to get started and to get a process in place, but uh, eventually they helped about 40 or 50 households go solar. And so then, um, you know, Anya Schoolman, who is the, the kid's mom is now our executive director. Uh, she started taking calls from all across the, the district and got a DC program going. We now, um, however many years later, have programs in 12 states in Washington, DC, including Arizona. Uh, and we've gotten a lot done in that time. So we've helped, uh, we've run over 300 solar co-ops. We've helped uh, now over 6,300 homes go solar through the co-op programs, uh, installing 53 megawatts of rooftop solar. We've facilitated through the programs $135 million worth of rooftop solar purchases, uh, $221 million in lifetime energy savings. So that's what we project over the 25 year lifetime of the solar panels, what we're gonna save um, folks that uh, purchase solar. 
And then we're uh, the co-op uh, solar installations are offsetting uh, 1.6 billion pounds of lifetime uh, carbon offsets over 25 years. So um, we think it's impressive work. Uh, we're excited to be doing it uh, in a small way in, in Arizona as well. Uh, as an organization, we also care about um, equity and, and recognize that, uh, on, you know, unfortunately, we live in an unequal society where um, burdens are not shared equally. And, you know, um, going solar is also predicated by home ownership, which is difficult for folks uh, to uh, obtain in low wealth communities um, and often communities of color. And so uh, we're trying to do, uh, we have an equity and inclusion program. We're working to do pilot uh, projects to help to share the benefits of solar among um, all communities and to help all Americans access clean energy. We have some policy initiatives that I'll just uh, quickly touch on here. So last year we launched a big sort of national vision called 30 Million Solar Homes. It has its own website, 30millionsolarhomes.org. Maybe Corey, you could put that in the chat. Um, and if you wanna check that out, it's, it's in partnership with a couple other national organizations. And it has started to, you know, we hope help to shape some of the conversation that's going on around solar in the federal uh, landscape today. So folks are probably aware there's some big infrastructure bills that are being debated in Washington, DC. And we are um, using the fact that we're headquartered in DC and have sort of folks all around the country to weigh in in key places like Arizona and also West Virginia um, to say, hey, like we need a lot of good solar stuff in the federal legislation. And so the, um, one of the packages has an extension of the, uh, or sort of an increase of the federal uh, solar tax credit. We'll talk about that later, um, but from 26% now back up to 30% and extended for 10 years, hoping to get some refundability on that as well so that it opens up solar to nonprofit organizations and folks that don't have a, a tax burden. Uh, so that's really exciting, um, and if you get involved in our network, we, uh, we may ask you soon to weigh in on uh, some of those issues. We're also working at the Arizona Corporation Commission on uh, something called the Energy Rules, which would get Arizona to um, reduce uh, its carbon emissions and electricity for regulated utilities uh, to 100% uh, reduction and also uh, spur some standards around energy efficiency and home battery storage, um, as well as a few other things. So we're hoping to get a final vote on that in the next few months. Um, one kind of uh, uh, small but, but mighty victory that we helped to play a role in uh, recently at the commission was to get rid of something called a grid access charge for APS customers. So everybody in this co-op uh, probably has TEP, so it doesn't apply to you. But if you have APS, uh, one thing that APS could do and um, uh, has been able to do for new solar customers is, is charge them, you know, six to ten dollars a month, depending how big their solar array is. Um, and so there were some really smart folks uh, that were doing uh, intervening work at the commission. We sort of stepped in at the end and uh, had almost 100 APS customers um, weigh in, uh, which helped to kind of push it over the finish line. Uh, and the commissioners voted in the new APS rate case to get rid of that charge for uh, solar customers. So, so that's good. That's the type of work that we're trying to do on the sort of fight for energy rights um, side of things. Uh, the Tucson Solar Co-op, as folks know, is, is open. Um, we've had a, a really big response uh, recently. Over the weekend, we got an article published in the Arizona Daily Star. Uh, and so uh, we went from having about 18 folks signed up on Friday to today we have 72 um, signed up. So it's been really exciting to watch everybody uh, roll in. And so if you're inspired uh, right now, or if you're inspired over the course of this webinar to sign up, you can do so at the link. And we'll talk more about how the co-op works in a minute. I also want to thank our co-op partners um, for the Tucson group. We have the local, uh, the state Sierra Club chapter, Grand Canyon chapter, uh, Sustainable Tucson's local group in Tucson, and Physicians for Social Responsibility, the Arizona chapter, the director of which lives in Tucson. So we're really um, happy to have the support of those folks. And perhaps you uh, heard about the co-op through uh, through them, but if you haven't, um, definitely go check out. They're doing some great work. So uh, from here, we're going to cover the presentation in sort of three sections. Uh, one is solar technology, uh, second is the co-ops, and third is um, the economics of solar. 
So let's just dive in. First up is solar technology. So what is this stuff and how does it work? So if you've never um, thought about going solar uh, before, you may have seen you know, solar panels on your neighbor's roof and wondered like, hey, how does that, how does that actually work? Um, so this is a basic diagram of a, a pretty standard solar setup. So first off, you've got solar panels on the roof collecting sunlight. Um, the energy that's, uh, that's generated by the solar panels is called direct current energy or DC. Uh, your home uses alternating current or AC, and so it has to go through an inverter in order to be able to use the, the power. So when you buy solar, you're um, uh, buying the panels, you're buying an inverter, and then you're buying the equipment to attach it all to your home. Um, from the inverter, the, the energy goes to your electrical panel, where then it goes straight into your house. And so if you're home during the day and the sun is shining and you're using energy, it's coming straight from your solar panels, which is really exciting. Um, if you are not home during the day and you're, you're still creating electricity, it's going to go back through your utility meter where it will be counted uh, by, the, by the utility and then back on to the distribution grid where someone that's nearby that's using electricity will soak up the solar that you've uh, generated. So that's, um, that's essentially the, um, the very basic way to describe the setup. We're gonna use some terms here tonight. So just wanna level set on a couple of things. So we're gonna talk about kilowatts. And in that context, we'll sort of use kilowatts to describe the size of a solar array. So uh, solar, solar arrays are sort of uh, built by panels that have certain wattages. And when you add all of them up, um, a thousand watts is one kilowatt. And when you add all of them up, you get to a, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten kilowatt size system. The production of the array is going to be measured in kilowatt hours. So how much uh, electricity is the solar producing? You know, typically homeowners are going to install between two and 12 kilowatt size systems. I think our average in Arizona is something around seven or eight um, kilowatts. And it just depends on a few factors, you know, um, your size of your roof, how much solar can you handle? Mostly it's based on how much electricity you use and something that the um, provider is going to want to know when they reach out to you is, is your electricity bill from the last, your electricity bills for the last year uh, so that they can appropriately size the, the right um, system for you. Um, but your budget is also a consideration. Uh, when we're talking about panels, this is uh, sort of how they're, they're put together. They're built to last. Uh, solar panels are, uh, have two different types of warranties. So one is a warranty from the manufacturer that um, you know, is for any defects or things that may happen to the panel. Uh, and the other warranty is for power production. So uh, typically panels are guaranteed to produce uh, power by year 25. And uh, all solar panels are going to sort of deteriorate a bit over time and efficiency, uh, but the, the warranty sort of guarantees it's still going to produce X amount um, in year 25. So these things are, are typically built to last. Um, I've said solar array a few times already, but that's just a term for all of the panels put together um, in one setup. Uh, Mentioned inverters is an important part of the process. And the basic thing you need to know about inverters is there's uh, generally two types. So you've got the central string inverter, which has a, um, a central box that connects all of the system uh, in, in one way. It uh, is kind of a basic setup. So if you don't have any shade, uh, it's a good thing to use. Um, the other setup is using microinverters, where there's an inverter underneath uh, typically each solar panel. And so you're, you're inverting the energy right there at the panel level. Um, good thing about that is you can get a lot of data and, and some folks think it's efficient, um, uh, more efficient, especially if you have a, a shaded setup uh, where you know, one panel might get shaded and then it's not gonna affect um, other, other parts of the system. Um, you don't need to be an expert on this. So uh, typically the installer is going to have a preference uh, for when they look at your home and, and often they have a preference for what types of equipment that they generally think work for the specific uh, area. And so that's something that you'll be able to talk through with them. 
Um, electrical panel is uh, something else that the installer will will definitely want to know about when you before you get a, a proposal uh, from them, just to know that that you have uh, a setup that can handle uh, solar on the house. You know, most homes don't need upgrades before going solar, but some do. If you have a smaller electric um, service and you have a lot of other things um, already looped into it, so they'll they'll look at that and let you know if you need a service upgrade. Uh, the cost of the upgrade is something that we get pricing for through the co-op process. So how does stuff go on uh, to the roof? It depends on the uh, short answer is it depends on the type of roof that you have. So uh, there's generally a racking uh, setup or, or a way to attach the panels to almost any type of roof. This is sort of a, a typical uh, racking setup on an asphalt shingle roof where you've got uh, beams that the panels are attached to and those are uh, flashed into the roof um, and sort of tucked under the shingle so that there's not gonna be any leaks. Um, but there's different types of ways to do this for different types of roofs. So if you have a flat roof, um, sometimes installers will offer a, a ballasting option um, or a pitch pocket option to then uh, pitch the panels up upright to be able to collect the sun uh, appropriately. Um, older homes that have parapet walls um, sometimes use uh, beams, or if you have a, a metal seam roof, uh, there are uh, there are clamps, clamping technologies available uh, for folks to use um, in that way. Um, the flashing technique is also used uh, typically when there's, um, if you have like the Spanish tile uh, type home, that is uh, that is typically possible to, um, to do. And again, this is something to talk about with the installer uh, when they check out your, um, your home personally. So ground mounted systems, you know, typically in our urban co-ops, uh, folks are not gonna get a ground mounted system um, just because you need a lot of extra space and typically they are more expensive because they require um, the, uh, you know, basically the setup to be built for the panels to uh, go on to as well as trenching. Um, but it is a way to um, have a lot more solar and uh, to be able to face it the, the correct direction. So we've done um, a couple co-ops in rural areas and folks have opted to do ground mounts, but, to, but typically in the urban co-ops, uh, most folks do rooftop. So is, is my house good for solar? Um, this is a few ways to find out. So one is the direction that your roof faces. Uh, so if you have a, an open south facing roof, that is the best direction. You're just, you're gonna generate the most electricity that way. Um, west is generally also okay, especially because uh, that's the time of day when we're using electricity in the late afternoon and the sun's going down and it's still generating um, energy that way. Um, north facing not recommended. Um, and again, this is something that you can discuss with your installer, you know, what, what is the best setup for my roof? Um, shade can be an issue if you have really mature trees near the property. Um, we try when folks sign up for the co-op to do an initial, uh, we call it a roof review where we'll go in on satellite imaging, we'll look at your roof and uh, we will flag whether, you know, it's basically free and clear. A lot of Arizona, as you can probably imagine, is pretty free and clear of this, but in some older neighborhoods uh, and in like Northern Arizona, uh, we have some shading issues. So that's something that we look at. And if, and if you do have a, a big tree, um, you know, it, solar might, be, might not be for you or you might wanna consider trimming the tree. So again, that's gonna be a, a, a call that you make uh, at the time that you get uh, uh, that you get looked at on the uh, on the property. Um, you need enough space to mount the panels too. So, and generally, you need enough space in uh, you know one or two areas. So you're not going to want to put you know single panels on on multiple multiple spots. And we we try to look at this too when we do roof reviews, and we uh, either qualify or maybe qualify folks uh, to send them through to the co-op process. So a lot of folks are increasingly interested in battery storage as well. So I just wanted to spend a couple minutes talking about battery storage and how it connects with, with solar. Um, so one question that we get sometimes is, you know, what happens if there's a power outage and if the grid goes down and you have solar, your solar is going to, to shut off as well. Uh, you're not gonna still have power 
unless you have a battery connected to the solar output and then the and then the solar and then the battery will back up the home when the power is out from from the utility but only if you have a battery and the reason for that is safety so uh, we don't want extra energy going back into grid lines when utility workers are trying to fix whatever problem uh, has occurred so what is the utility of uh, batteries today, uh, typically. So, you know, uh, first and foremost, used as sort of backup power source. If, if you have uh, frequent outages, if you have equipment that you're worried about not having in an outage, like a like medical equipment, for example, uh, and you don't want a, a diesel generator, you know, having the, ba the battery backup as an, as an option connected to the solar is, uh, is, a, is a good option. Um, Batteries, uh, the sort of um, the new batteries that are programmable, you know, you can set it up to re reduce your draw from the utility and cycle throughout uh, each day so that when the sun goes down uh, and or you just need extra energy, but you don't want to draw it from the utility, you can draw it from the battery instead and then save additional money on your utility bill that way. Um, kind of in, in, the, in the future and maybe even in the near future, uh, the utility of, of lots and lots of people having battery storage is that, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of thinking and programs being developed on, you know, can we create basically virtual power plants where utilities can draw from, uh, you know, batteries in people's homes to be able to, for example, meet uh, peak power demand in the summer. So right now, utilities that get stressed in the summer have to go on the open market, buy really expensive energy or turn on gas peaker power plants, which are dirty and expensive. Uh, but what if instead they could just come to their customers and say, hey, like, uh, we'll pay you to uh, dump your extra stored battery uh, into the grid right now because we need it. Um, and all that's coming from solar. So, so that's, um, that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, there's an APS pilot program right now to incentivize folks to, um, to install batteries and something like that uh, is uh, part of the energy rules that we're, we're trying to get through the commission. So we have a, a battery, sort of a basic battery storage guide uh, on our website if you wanna sort of dive in deeper and also you know, chat with your local solar installers about this um, as well. A lot of them are getting to be, um, some of them are getting to be expert on battery stuff and have batteries in their own homes. Uh, electric vehicles is something else you could consider going so going getting through the the co-op is a, is something to charge your electric vehicle uh, at home so uh, uh, we will get pricing on installing a level two EV charger or at least installing a 240 volt outlet uh, that you can plug the EV charger into um, at home there's a huge uh, crossover between folks that are interested in solar and interested in electric vehicles maybe some people that are on this webinar drive an electric vehicle uh, already so it could be a good time to sort of um, do that these are just the different types of of chargers uh, that are available so you know typically if you when you buy or lease uh, an EV you'll you know you'll you'll definitely have the level one charger but it can be very slow uh, and so having uh, the level two charger can can be a lot more convenient. So something to think about. All right, we're going to go on to um, how the co-ops work. Unless Corey, uh, were there any uh, questions or things that came in that you think I should address um, now? Uh, no questions that uh, I think you need to address now. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry, just one more thing. It looks like there was one that just came in. Could you give um, the uh, the web page for the storage guide? I can uh, go ahead and put that in the chat again. Perfect. Yeah. Great. All right, let's talk a bit about how the co-op, uh, how our co-op uh, setup works. So, you know, why go solar through the co-op? Um, one reason is, and I'll walk through kind of the steps of the, the co-op in a minute, but just in, in concept, the, the co-op is about bringing together lots of households in one geographic area. We want to um, sort of build up a group of, of interested and educated and excited folks that want to go solar. We then bid that group out to um, installers, and so they will offer us competitive 
uh, pricing. They'll uh, show us what types of warranties they'll offer to the group, um, what, what their capacity is to serve the group compared to others in the area. Um, we get a lot of information. And so then the group comes together and selects one provider. Uh, so we can, we can sort of present the group with a competitive group offer once the group selects their installer. You get support from Solar United Neighbors through the process. So uh, through email or phone, um, you can reach out to us if you're having an issue uh, as you go through the process of going solar or have a question that you um, may not feel comfortable asking the installer, for example, or something like that. We're, we're trying to help and, and smooth the process out. Um, you can also learn more. A lot of people learn a lot by participating in the selection committee. So this is where we have the bids back from installers. We try to compare them uh, as closely as possible in a spreadsheet and sort of walk through the selection committee. And they're the ones that end up sort of debating amongst each other and making a decision about what company to pick. And, and I think a lot of people find that, um, that process um, enlightening. And so it's, it's, a good, it's a good opportunity to learn a lot more about, about, uh, about going solar. And then we're, you know, we're trying to build a movement of, of solar owners in the state. And so you can become a part of that. This is the basic sort of step-by-step -step of the co-op process. So the first, um, you know, the first three things are really just about growing the co-op. Uh, and that's what we're, that, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, the co-op, as I mentioned earlier, really has exploded this co-op uh, over the last few days. And so we will likely go to RFP um, pretty soon. We have we have some sort of staffing capacity issues, but we'll, we'll probably go in the next week or two uh, to RFP and send that out to installers because we typically want to wait till we have at least 30 participant households in the co-op. We have over 70 right now, so uh, we'll be probably sending that out soon. Uh, we give installers two weeks to bid on the uh, project, and then we will um, sort of work through those bids, and then we will hold the selection committee uh, meeting where anyone that's in the co-op can participate on the selection committee, uh, and they're the ones that pick the installer. You all are the ones putting solar on your homes, so we put the decision on you of which company you want to use. Um, from there, the installer that wins the bid receives the list of everyone that signed up for the co-op. Um, we only provide the list to that installer and to no one else. Um, and so from there, they will, uh, they will call everyone, they will email everyone, they will get in touch with you and, uh, and have a conversation with you about what your goals are in going solar. They'll provide a, a proposal to you based on the co-op <clears throat> pricing that was bid in. And from there, you can decide whether to sign a contract or not. So the co-op's free to join. It's, um, it's no obligation. You don't have to go solar at the end of the day. You can, you can go uh, sign up, get a proposal, decide it's not for you. But if you decide that you want to move forward, you can sign a contract with the installer. Um, something that's important to know is like, what do we get out of this? So uh, we are a nonprofit organization. One of the ways we're funded to do this work is the installer pays us a $600 fee for every contract that's signed. Um, and so that fee helps us to run the, the co-op uh, programs. Um, we're mostly funded through grants, but that also helps us to do this work. Um, and then once you sign a contract, you, um, go through the process of, uh, of the installation with the installer. So they typically will help you get the permits from the city, uh, get the interconnection application with the utility, which basically allows you to um, have solar on your home and to turn it on and to feed it into the utility grid. And then you'll set up a time to actually install the system. So this can take, um, this can take a few months and you know, the sooner you kind of decide to do it, uh, the sooner you, that you'll um, be able to install. Um, we have been trying to do celebrations in the past. We used to like have a house party and celebrate and have help people meet each other. That obviously has been hard the last couple of years. Um, so we'll try to find a way to bring people together, whether it's still virtually or whether we can do sort of an outdoor thing, um, TBD. So again, who picks the installer? It's not us, it's the members of the co-op. We run the bid process, uh, but we put it back to folks. We'll ask you to join the selection committee. Anybody in the co-op can do that. 
and you'll be able to look at the different uh, pricing, the different types of solar panels and equipment, the warranties, the experience of the providers, and you know other factors like are they local? How much? How many staff do they have? Um, have they done co-ops before? What was our experience with them there? You know that that sort of thing. Do they have a local office? Uh, just as an example, our co-op in Tucson last year was, uh, I think, very successful. So we ended up with 167 households that signed up for the co-op. Of those, 61 decided to sign contracts and go solar. Uh, we installed about, or we didn't, but the um, Technicians for Sustainability, who was selected by the co-op as the provider, uh, ended up installing around 435 kilowatts of solar and the group overall invested about $1.2 million. So um, pretty pretty big impact. Um, I would say very successful. We, um, and we, we had a great experience. Okay, so on to the next section, unless Corey stop me if there's anything you think I should address. No, we had a couple of questions, but I'm addressing them in the chat. We're good. All right, perfect. So let's talk a bit about everyone's favorite subject, economics. Um, so, you know, the, the cost of solar has has fallen. It's in some ways leveled off. We've found a bit over the last few years, um, but it but definitely is a lot more affordable than it used to be. Um, this chart shows the difference between the national average price per watt for solar and then the average um, Solar United Neighbors co-op price per watt. So, you know, we never can promise that there's gonna be uh, a big, a big savings going solar in the co-op. There's definitely a lot of benefits to doing solar through the co-op, but um, you know, but typically there is some cost savings um, involved in um, in just the way that the group purchase uh, helps to drive that cost down. So, and this doesn't this chart I should just caveat is not applicable to all installers, but just generally in the industry um, there are. This is a breakdown of kind of the the cost of solar. And a lot of the cost of solar is sort of the soft cost. So that's, um, that is permitting and things like that, but it's also marketing and finding customers. Um, and so, you know, our, our fee uh, is typically less than what folks will spend to find a customer. That's not true for every installer, but, um, but that's typically where we can see some savings in addition to the installer having some uh, you know, some, some knowledge that, hey, I've got this group of customers, we can do, you know, bulk orders on things as we have a lot of folks in the pipeline. Federal tax credit. So this is an important conversation in a, in a sort of a, a shifting conversation. So this is what it is. Uh, this is the law today. <laughs> uh, we will see what happens in DC very soon. Uh, to see if this is actually going to be better uh, for next year. But as of today, uh, the federal tax credit for solar is 26% uh, of the total cost of the system. So this is the turnkey cost, like labor, installation, parts, everything. You can write off 26% of that cost uh, from your federal taxes. Um, and, and so that can save folks a lot of money. So that's uh, in this scenario, sort of an average uh, price, syst price system, an average size, you'd save around $5,000 with the 26% tax credit. If nothing happens, the 26% stays the same for next year. It's scheduled to go to 22% the year after and then drop to zero. And this is all for residential systems. Um, however, there's a, you know, the ongoing discussion in Washington, D.C. right now is actually to raise the tax credit back up to 30 percent, where it was for many years, uh, and extend it for another 10 years. And so that would be a really big um, lift to helping more people to go solar. Obviously, you can see the 26 percent is a big uh, boost. So, so we're excited about that. That's something that we're really uh, pushing hard for, but, you know, can't promise that until it's there. So this is what the rule is today. Arizona also has a, a state tax credit for solar that's worth up to $1,000. So in addition to the federal tax credit, you can take another $1,000 off um, through state taxes. And then there's a couple other rules that, um, that you don't sort of see up front, but can, can make solar more affordable. So there's a property tax exemption where solar cannot, um, 
sort of raise your uh, uh, the taxes that you owe to to the county, um, and then uh, sales tax exemption on uh, solar. So those things help make it affordable as well. So just talking about Tucson Electric Power, I'm assuming most folks in this co-op are going to have TEP, and so we've done um, an analysis on you know, the sort of pricing and electricity savings based on the current uh, rate structure there. And so this is, um, uh, these systems are, you know, kind of on the on the smaller side or sort of, you know, definitely mid to smaller size. Uh, so, you know, the, the cost of solar could be, for you, could be uh, definitely more than this. Um, but if we're looking at sort of an average energy consumption of 11,000 kilowatt hours a year, um, you know, that we estimate that would be like a three and a half kilowatt system to offset 50% of your energy use or around a seven kilowatt system to offset 100% of your energy use. Um, under some average pricing, uh, those systems would cost, you know, 9,000 to almost $19,000. Um, with after the federal and state tax credits, you're looking more like 6,000 to almost $13,000 net. And then the electricity savings kind of um, cost estimates, you know, you, you, you would pay off the system in, you know, depending on the size of the system and how you use electricity, um, something like, you know, maybe 10 years. Uh, but over time and over the lifetime of the system, you would come out ahead. So something to think about there. And the, most of the installers will provide you with um, with estimates on on savings and, uh, and you know with with different types of, of outlooks, we try to use a, a pretty conservative outlook. Some of them are some of, some of the ones you'll get might be rosier than this, um, but we try to be sort of conservative and level headed about what this looks like. So I don't want to get in too deep on this, and I'm happy to answer questions uh, about it and uh, kind of go from there. But just something to know about the Tucson electricity, uh, Tucson electric power rates. Uh, when you go solar, you'll have a, a few different options, um, just like folks have now to select a rate plan. Most new solar customers with TEP are selecting the time of use uh, rate plan which is, is a plan where energy just costs more during on peak hours. Uh, and that's a time typically that solar can help to offset. So that's good. Um, the peak hours for TEP are 3 p.m. 7 p.m. in the summer, which uh, th those months are May through September. And then um, 6 to 9 a.m. and 6 to 9 p.m. in the winter. So October through April. Uh, and those are Monday through Friday, excluding holidays. So weekends um, don't apply. And then there are other um, options, uh, but those for rates for solar customers, but they include um, something called a demand charge uh, where the electricity prices are, are lower. And then there's this sort of higher fixed charge in the demand charge, uh, which at the end of the day, is just not ideal for most um, solar Users, again, sort of depends on your situation, uh, but most folks are, that are going solar are selecting the time of use plan. There can be arguments made either way, but that's what a lot of folks are doing. Um, then uh, there are credits available from a TEP uh, for the extra solar that you generate. So this can help you save money if you go solar. So unfortunately uh, in Arizona, regulated utilities like TEP um, no longer offer net metering. So if you're familiar with that um, term um, and that setup, uh, we generally don't have that in Arizona anymore. Uh, but what, it, what it, the setup is today is that TEP will credit you every month for, for all the extra kilowatt hours of solar that you send to them that month. And so the current rate for that credit is 7.81 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, that just changed this, this fall. Um, and so solar helps you to lower your electric bill in a couple ways. One is just by lowering the amount of electricity you, pr you purchase from the utility. Because if you're home and you're using your energy straight from solar, all of that electricity is not electricity you have to purchase from the utility. And then second, if you're sending extra electricity back to TEP, you can earn credits for uh, for that excess generation. So there are fixed charges on every utility bill that cannot be 
reduced um, using solar. So you'll never get down to absolute zero. Um, things like monthly service charge, there's a small solar meter fee, there's taxes, other surcharges. So, um, so solar can definitely help and uh, a system that's designed correctly um, can offset, you know, all of your electricity use throughout the year, um, but you won't be able to get your bill, you know, down to zero. So saving with solar, there's a bunch of different ways and, you know, local installers I'm sure have tips on this too, um, but, you know, line up your energy use with your solar production if possible. So your, you know, electricity uh, from TEP costs, you, you know, depends on the time of day, time of year, but, you know, 10 to 15 cents per kilowatt hour, you're only getting 7.8 cents per kilowatt hour from them uh, for any extra you send. So if you're, if you're offsetting, your energy use with solar, that's, that's the way you're gonna save um, a lot of money. Uh, if, you know, still conserving energy use during peak hours and those expensive times, uh, taking energy efficiency measures around the house and, you know, smart thermostats, never a bad idea. Uh, so paying for solar. So there's a few different um, options here. So one is just, you know, paying cash and, uh, and do it that way if, if, if you're able to do that. Um, a lot of folks end up taking out a loan to help to uh, finance solar. And so a few recommendations there, one is talk to your bank or shop around with a local credit union. Um, there's a credit union in Tucson, Tucson Old Pueblo Credit Union that has a solar loan product. Um, so you know definitely look around for options like that. Um, some folks opt to take out uh, a home equity line of credit to help pay for, for solar. Um, some folks end up, if they're refinancing, they take out some cash to help to pay for it that way. And some installers do offer like in-house uh, or sort of third-party financing options. And, you know, we, we would sort of advise folks to watch out for, you know, dealer fees and things that are associated with some of those. Um, some of those programs. Those can be kind of convenient, but maybe not always the best um, option financially. And then, you know, leasing used to be more popular, you know, typically not a good option for most people today with the low cost of, of financing. And a lot of the companies that are doing leasing are just sort of making out, um, you, you know, you're, you're just going to be better off if you can end up financing the, the system if you can't pay in cash. Um, leases end up having long-term contracts that can escalate over time. And so some people that are in leases today are paying more, you know, per month to the leasing company than they were paying before they got solar. And so there's just a lot of kind of horror stories out there. It can also make selling your home um, more difficult. So um, think about different financing options if you're ending up um, going solar and, and that's um, something that you need. We have uh, something unique to this co-op, so I'll just mention it here, is an, uh, an assistance program for a very limited number of households in the co-op. We have a local donor who's putting up some money that is offering a subsidy of up to $7,000 per home for seven homes in the co-op. We're sort of taking it first come, first serve. Um, one kind of key uh, uh, sort of uh, piece for eligibility is that the household must be at or below 130 percent of area median income. If you sign up for the co-op and indicate that you're interested in, in this, we'll send you more information and a short form to, um, to apply. So, but we're excited about this. We're hoping that it can help get some folks over the hump that uh, may not have been able to do it before. All right, so what's next? And then we'll wrap up and take any final questions. So, uh, here's the website again for the co-op. Uh, check it out. There's a bunch of um, information on there. Uh, the, the orange join the co-op button is the button that you want to press to join and fill out your information. Um, and then if we have any installers on the webinar this evening that are not um, already on our RFP list, um, you can go to this section of our website to kind of learn a little bit more about us sign up to receive um, RFPs for your, um, for your area and make sure that you don't miss um, a co-op in the future. All right, thank you so much. This is, uh, this is our email address for, for me and for our team. 
Um, so if you have any questions uh, that you didn't want to ask on the presentation tonight, you can definitely email us there. Um, but for now, I will stop and see, Corey, if we have anything that you think we should take live. Yes, I have got a couple for you here. Cool. Um, the first one, I'm just going in, in order here. The first one is, um, uh, it says uh, TEP offers free solar. What's the difference between you and them? Yeah, so I, so I saw that there's a, there's a TEP residential um, program and I think it's full. So I don't think it's open currently. I could be wrong about that, but I, I think I looked at that earlier today. And it's a program that they offer sometimes um, to meet the renewable energy standard. Um, and, but it's usually like a limited time deal. They also have something called a Go Solar, I'm gonna mess up the name, but it's like Go Solar with TEP or it's, it's basically like a community solar program where you can um, sort of get a fixed price uh, uh, by being a part of that program. That's also sort of a, a, a capped program. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, if you own the solar system and if you're, you're gonna just get more benefits uh, overall, if you're able to, um, to you know, finance and, uh, or, or just pay for, for the solar rather than going through the utility own programs, but if you but if you meet the requirements of the, it, it just depends. I, I would definitely like look at the um, sort of the fine print of what you're really getting from the utility programs. Okay, thanks. Um, the next one, uh, someone asked a question about the um, who applies for the um, tax credit and the rebates. I answered the federal uh, part of it, but for the Arizona uh, credit, is that the installer that is applying um, on behalf of the homeowner, or does the homeowner have to do that themselves? No, the homeowner does it. It's the same as the federal uh, taxes because it's your income taxes. Uh, and then the uh, how long is the is the process um, both the going solar process and also the co-op from start to finish? Yeah, it's a good question. So the co-op is open to new signups through the end of the year. We typically have a like a two month window for folks to join. So we launched the co-op at the end of October, and so we've got November and December for folks to to sign up. Um, from there, it can take uh, a few months to go from sort of signing the contract to getting the permits done, to getting solar on the home, especially if a co-op is pretty big, um, you know, we'll probably ask people to be patient just because, you know, working with one installer, um, you know, they have to work through the whole group. So, um, so it, it, can, it can depend on the size of the group and, and the capacity of the, in, the installer. And also just how quickly it takes the, the city and, uh, the utility to turn the permits around. Okay. And uh, related to that, I guess, in terms of the process, at what stage does the roof evaluation get done? So, well, I guess there's, there's sort of two stages. So one is we do an initial roof review right when folks sign up uh, through just satellite. So we'll go on basically Google Earth and look at your roof. Um, and make a general assessment about shade and about uh, about space for panels. Um, but the but the installer, once you sign a contract, is going to then come look at the roof and make sure that you don't need any serious um, you know upgrades to the roof or that there are any sort of uh, problem like structural problems that need to be addressed before moving forward. Great, thank you. Um, any information about uh, PV installations and historic, historic property designation? That's a good question. Um, I, I don't know the answer for, for Tucson uh, exactly. So if anybody on wants to, uh, from Tucson that knows, wants to chime in in the chat on, on that question. Um, in, in some neighborhoods in, in Phoenix, I know that there's basically like a historic, uh, you know, there are sort of guidelines to having a historic property designation that you need to follow. And sometimes those guidelines are that you can't, um, like your solar couldn't be seen from the street, for example. I'm not sure if that applies to some of the designations in Tucson. Uh, you'd have to check with sort of the local jurisdictions um, on that if you wanted to sort of maintain the designation. 
but I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. Uh, and the next question we have, I think, um, uh, let's see, it says, uh, is the current economic upheaval, uh, in other words, shortage of labor, availability, obtaining parts and things, is that affect, will that affect the PV installations? It's a really good question. I, th I think, I think it could. Um, I think it's, you know, it's being affected in, in other areas. Um, I know we have at least one local installer around here, and I don't want to call you out, Kevin. But if you want to, if you want to weigh in on this one, we could um, we could open the mic up and and you could tell us what you're seeing. Um, I'd be I'd be curious. Corey, do we have the ability to do that? Sure, do. I'm gonna um, unmute you here, Kevin. Go right ahead. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we, we can. can. Yeah, so um, there we are seeing shortages that are affecting um, module supply as well as module pricing. And then probably more impactful, we're seeing issues uh, affecting, um, you know, aluminum, steel, copper. So racking prices, um, copper prices, not specific to solar, but just, you know, in order to get a solar installation done. Um, we are seeing uh, what feel like pretty significant effects there. And then, you know, I can't speak for all the solar companies in Tucson, but most of the solar companies in Tucson that I'm aware of, including TFS, are booked out um, uh, as far as I have ever seen them uh, booked out just due to labor shortages. Uh, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And, and, and really, I mean, I have colleagues around the country um, and it's a remarkably uniform experience. It, it's just, it's happening everywhere. Yeah. We yeah. can confirm that as well from other program, state programs. I, I work in, um, uh, in our headquarters and uh, we certainly get similar reports in terms of, uh, of labor and of, uh, of costs and availability materials. Yep, so I think we, we will advise patients for, for all involved here. Just looking through some other questions here. Thank you, Kevin, for, um, for answering that. Uh, and also for answering the one in the chat about the historic review. For folks that didn't uh, are not looking at the chat, um, Kevin said you need historic review, but it generally does not prevent installations from going through. Um, someone uh, else also asked about the tax credit. It says, if we join now, does that lock us in for the 26% tax credit? Brett, do you want to take that? Um, no, because the tax credit applies to when your solar is installed. And so if so at the, the point the solar is installed is, is when you're gonna get the tax uh, the tax benefit. So so if the either way you'll get at least the 26% because 26% is scheduled for next year as well as this year. Um, but if you but if it goes back up to 30% for next year and you get installed next year, then you should be able to take the 30%, depending how the law gets written. So that's not up to me, but you, you, if you get installed next year, you get at least the 26%. Uh, next question is, um, if, uh, if someone's not able to participate in this current process, uh, do you know when the next local um, co-op will be launched? Um, I mean, our, I, our thinking is we would try to do one of these uh, once a year, maybe once every year and a half, uh, depending on how things go. And so, so if, if you're not able to do it this time, then we may have a, another co-op opening around this time next year or early the year after. And the uh, last one, um, if this is related, I guess, is uh, with um, the idea that the um, uh, escalating co the costs are going up uh, and some of the shortages and things, do you recommend that people um, uh, wait or that they proceed with going solar right now? I mean, I can't predict the future. <laughs> so I think if it's something you're interested in doing, it's, I mean, and from Kevin at, at Technicians for Sustainability, as he says, there's a long line uh, for folks already to to go solar and so it may be wise to um to to get in the line now um that would that would be one thought so but it's kind of up to 
up to everybody to decide that. Do we have time for one more question? I think one just came in here, another one on the Q&A. Sure, we got five minutes left. Um, someone's asking, uh, how do I get the benefit of newer technology, which will come up very soon? I'm not sure what that means, but you know, I think the you know the products that are available now are are you know most of them are are pretty good, and I think I, I wouldn't wait for something even newer and, and flashier. If this if the time works for you to to do it, then it's then it's the right time for you. That would be that'd be my opinion. So. Thanks. I think those are all the questions. Um, if uh, for some reason, I, I think I got all of them except for uh, one specific one that someone had asked. But if for some reason uh, we didn't answer your question, um, I'm going to put our email address for our um, Arizona team in the chat. Feel free to send us a message. Uh, we're happy to, to answer questions of you know any and all sort at the uh, address that I just put into the chat there, which is azteam at solarunitedneighbors.org. Perfect. Well, thanks everybody for joining tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, we're excited about all the interest in in this group, um, and also just want to say thanks to to Kevin for answering that question, answering the question in in the chat. Uh, we had a great experience with Technicians for Sustainability in the co-op last year. They do great work around town. So, really appreciate it, everybody. We'll uh, we'll be in touch.